Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Taylor Wiley, who passed away at the age of 56 on June 20th, was an American actor, sumo wrestler, and mixed martial artist, known for his vibrant presence both in and out of the ring. Born in Lei, Hawaii, and of American Samoan descent, Taylor's journey through diverse careers left a memorable mark on many lives. Taylor began his career in sumo wrestling after being recruited by the legendary Takamiyama Daigoro in March 1987. Under the Shikona Takamikuni, he quickly made a name for himself by remaining unbeaten in his first 14 bouts and winning two consecutive Yusho championships. His imposing weight of nearly 440 pounds made him one of the largest and most formidable wrestlers in the sport. In March 1988, he became the first foreign-born wrestler to win a championship in the Makushita division and reached his highest rank of Makushita II the following year. Taylor's sumo career, however, was cut short by knee problems, leading to his retirement in July 1989. Not one to be deterred by setbacks, Taylor transitioned to professional wrestling and mixed martial arts. He joined Tatsumi Fujinami's Dragon Bombers stable in New Japan Pro Wrestling before eventually making his way to the Ultimate Fighting Championships. Competing under the name Taylor Tuli, Taylor's match at UFC 1 against Gerard Gordeaux is remembered as one of the most memorable David and Goliath matchups in MMA history. Taylor's charisma and unique charm also found a place on the silver screen in television. Credited as Taylor Wiley, he captured hearts with his role as the amiable hotel worker in the comedy film Forgetting Sarah Marshall. He became a household name through his recurring role as Kamakona Tupuola on the popular TV series Hawaii Five Zero and made appearances on shows like Magnum, P.I., and One West Waikiki. Taylor's legacy extends beyond his professional accomplishments. His warmth and humor made him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry and among his fans. Whether mentoring fellow wrestlers like future Yokozuna Akabono Taro or bringing joy to audiences worldwide, Taylor's spirit was infectious and will be dearly missed. Hiram Kasten, the beloved actor and comedian known for his roles on iconic sitcoms such as Seinfeld and Saved by the Bell, passed away at the age of 71 on June 16th, following a courageous battle with prostate cancer and Crohn's disease. Hiram's final moments were spent in the loving embrace of his wife, Diana Kissiel Kastenbaum, in their New York home, only hours after celebrating their 38th wedding anniversary. Born Hiram Z. Kastenbaum on October 30, 1952, Hiram carved a unique niche for himself in the world of comedy. He is best remembered for his role as Michael, Elaine Beans's co-worker on Seinfeld, where his character's humorous exchanges became a cherished part of the show's legacy. His friendship with Jerry Seinfeld began in the early days at Comic Strip Live in New York City, where Jerry served as the MC. This friendship, which lasted for 45 years, was a testament to Hiram's warm personality and his knack for forging lasting relationships. Hiram's illustrious career in the New York comedy scene saw him performing at renowned clubs like the Improv, the Comedy Cellar, Caroline's, and Dangerfields. His comedic talent and timing earned him guest spots on several other popular TV shows, including Mad About You, Everybody Loves Raymond, Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and of course, Saved by the Bell. Despite retiring from the entertainment industry in 2017 due to declining health, Hiram remained a cherished figure in the comedy community. It was only in the last six months that he revealed the severity of his illness to friends. The response from his peers was heartwarming. They rallied around him, 
with many visiting him in Batavia or joining late-night Zoom meetings that often extended into the early hours. These interactions, filled with laughter and camaraderie, brought immense joy to Hiram and extended his life by at least two months. Hiram Caston is survived by his wife, Diana, and their daughter, Millicent Jade. His legacy is one of laughter, friendship, and a profound impact on the world of comedy. Hiram's memory will continue to live on through the countless lives he touched with his humor and kindness. Evans Evans, who passed away at the age of 91 on June 16th, was an accomplished American actress, known for her memorable role as Velma Davis in the 1967 film Bonnie and Clyde. Born in Bluefield, West Virginia, Evans' acting career spanned several decades and included notable appearances in over 25 feature films and television projects. Evans made a significant impact on television with her performances in iconic shows such as The Twilight Zone, where she appeared in the episode A Hundred Yards Over the Rim in 1961. She also had notable roles in Gunsmoke, playing in the episode Harp's Blood, and in the suspenseful Alfred Hitchcock Presents episode The Big Score. Her talent and versatility were further showcased in The Alfred Hitchcock Hour, where she portrayed Penny Sanford in the episode I Saw the Whole Thing in 1962. Evans also left her mark on the Broadway stage. In 1957, she starred as Flirt Conroy in The Dark at the Top of the Stairs at the Music Box Theater, sharing the stage with esteemed actors like Teresa Wright, Pat Hingle, and Sandy Dennis. Her Broadway performance was a testament to her range and ability to captivate audiences in both film and theater. In 1966, Evans appeared in an uncredited role in her husband John Frankenheimer's film, Grand Prix, highlighting her continuous collaboration with him throughout their marriage. The couple married on December 13, 1963, and remained devoted to each other until Frankenheimer's death in 2002. Evans Evans' legacy is one of dedication, talent, and a profound impact on both the big and small screens. Her contributions to film, television, and theater will be remembered and cherished by fans and the industry alike. As we celebrate her life and career, we honor a remarkable actress who brought depth and authenticity to every role she played. She is survived by her loved ones and a legacy of performances that continue to inspire and entertain. Evans Evans will always be remembered for her exceptional talent, grace, and the lasting impression she left on the world of entertainment. Donald Sutherland, who passed away at the age of 88 on June 20th in Miami, was a Canadian actor whose career spanned six remarkable decades. Renowned for his versatility and depth, Sutherland left an indelible mark on the film and television industry, earning numerous accolades including a Primetime Emmy Award, two Golden Globe Awards, and an Academy Honorary Award in 2017. Despite never receiving a competitive Academy Award nomination, he is celebrated as one of the finest actors of his generation. Sutherland's rise to fame began with iconic roles in films such as The Dirty Dozen, Mass H, and Kelly's Heroes. His ability to seamlessly transition between leading and supporting roles in diverse genres made him a beloved figure in Hollywood. His filmography boasts an impressive array of performances in movies like Clute, Don't Look Now, Animal House, Ordinary People, and The Hunger Games franchise, where he portrayed the chilling President Snow. On television, Sutherland's portrayal of a forensic psychiatrist in Citizen X earned him a Primetime Emmy Award. His compelling performances in Uprising and Path to War garnered him additional Golden Globe awards, cementing his status as a versatile and powerful actor across mediums. Beyond his professional achievements, Sutherland was deeply honored in his native Canada. He was inducted into the Canadian Walk of Fame in 2000 and the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2011. In recognition of his contributions to the arts, he was made an Officer of the Order of Canada in 1978 and later elevated to Companion of the Order of Canada in 2019. 
Sutherland's illustrious career was further commemorated with a Canada Post stamp issued in his honor in 2023. Sutherland's personal life was as rich as his professional one. He was the father of Kiefer, Rossif, and Angus Sutherland, all of whom followed in his footsteps to become actors. His passion for acting and commitment to his craft were evident until the very end, as he continued to inspire audiences and fellow actors alike. Donald Sutherland's legacy is one of extraordinary talent, unwavering dedication, and a profound impact on the world of entertainment. He will be remembered as a true legend whose performances captivated and moved audiences for generations. His contributions to film and television will continue to be celebrated, ensuring that his influence endures long after his passing. Anouk Aimé, who passed away at the age of 92 on June 18th, was a celebrated French film actress whose illustrious career spanned over seven decades. Known for her striking beauty and enigmatic screen presence, Aimé graced the silver screen in 70 films, leaving an indelible mark on international cinema. Born in Paris, Aimé began her film career at the tender age of 14. She studied acting and dance, developing her craft, and preparing for a lifetime of artistic contributions. Her early career saw her collaborating with notable directors and appearing in diverse cinematic landscapes across Europe and America. Aimé's talent shone brightly in iconic films such as Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita and Jacques Demy's Lola and Claude Lelouch's A Man and a Woman, for which she won the Golden Globe Award for Best Actress and the BAFTA Award for Best Actress. Her performance in this film also earned her an Academy Award nomination, propelling her to international stardom. Throughout her career, Aimé was known for portraying complex characters, often embodying the femme fatale with a melancholic aura. Her roles in films like Justine and Tragedy of a Ridiculous Man showcased her versatility and depth as an actress. Aimé's ability to convey intense emotion with subtlety made her performances unforgettable, earning her accolades such as the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival for A Leap in the Dark and an honorary Caesar Award in 2002. Aimé's legacy is not only marked by her acting accolades, but also by her profound impact on the film industry. Her collaborations with legendary directors and her portrayal of memorable characters have left an indelible mark on cinema history. She was celebrated for her beauty and elegance, often compared to icons like Jacqueline Kennedy. Her presence on screen was described as both alluring and forbidding, a testament to her unique and captivating persona. Anouk Aimé's life was also rich in personal experiences. She was married and divorced four times and had one child, Manuela Papatakis. Despite the ups and downs of her personal life, Aimé's dedication to her craft remained unwavering. As we remember Anouk Aimé, we celebrate a remarkable actress whose contributions to cinema will continue to inspire and enchant audiences for generations to come. Her legacy as one of the most captivating and talented actresses of her time will forever be cherished. Eric Canwell, who passed away at the age of 63 on June 15th due to plasma cell leukemia, was a highly acclaimed film and television director from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Throughout his vibrant career, Canuel left a memorable mark on the world of visual storytelling, captivating audiences with his unique style and compelling narratives. Born to actor Ivan Canuel, Eric's passion for the arts was ingrained from an early age. He began his career in the mid-1980s, directing music videos for renowned artists such as Paul Pichet, Sass Jordan, Norman Iceberg, Vilain Pinguin, and Sylvain Cosette. His early work in music videos laid a strong foundation for his future endeavors in television and film. Canuel's talent and creativity soon led him to the world of television, where he directed popular series such as Big Wolf on Campus for the Fox Network and The Hunger, broadcast on Showtime and the Movie Network. 
His adept storytelling and ability to create engaging content quickly garnered him recognition and respect within the industry. In 2000, Canuel's IMAX film, Hemingway, A Portrait, won a Genie Award for Best Short Documentary and the Maximum Image Award for Best 2D Film at the Miami Aventura IMAX Days. This achievement was a testament to his skill in crafting compelling documentaries that resonated with audiences and critics alike. Throughout the early 2000s, Canuel directed several notable films, including Matthew Blackheart, Monster Smasher, The Pig's Law, Red Nose, The Last Tunnel, and The Outlander. His 2006 film, Bon Cop, Bad Cop, was particularly successful, earning numerous nominations and awards and cementing his status as a distinguished filmmaker. In addition to his film work, Canuel continued to make significant contributions to television. In 2010, he directed the episode Fala Erica of the TV series Being Erica. In 2016, he directed a segment of the collective film Nine. His work remained impactful up to his final days, with his direction of the last four episodes of the first season of Transplant in 2020 being particularly noteworthy. Bill Walton, who passed away at the age of 71 on May 27 from colorectal cancer, was an iconic American professional basketball player and television sportscaster. Walton's towering presence both on and off the court left an indelible mark on the world of basketball and beyond. Walton's basketball journey began at the University of California, Los Angeles, where he played under legendary coach John Wooden. Standing at 6 foot 11, Walton dominated college basketball in the early 1970s, winning three consecutive National College Player of the Year awards from 1972 to 1974. He led the UCLA Bruins to two NCAA championships in 1972 and 1973, and was instrumental in their remarkable 88-game winning streak. Drafted first overall in the 1974 NBA draft, Walton quickly became a star with the Portland Trail Blazers. Despite numerous injuries that plagued his career, he led the Trail Blazers to their first NBA championship in 1977, earning the NBA Finals Most Valuable Player Award. The following season, he was named the NBA Most Valuable Player. Walton's professional career was marred by injuries, resulting in 37 orthopedic surgeries throughout his life. Yet, he displayed incredible resilience, ultimately finding a second wind with the Boston Celtics. As a backup center, Walton earned the NBA Sixth Man of the Year Award in the 1985-86 season and won his second NBA championship with the Celtics. After retiring from the NBA, Walton transitioned into a successful career as a sportscaster, overcoming a severe stutter to become an Emmy Award-winning broadcaster. His enthusiasm and unique commentary style endeared him to fans and colleagues alike. Walton's love for the Grateful Dead, self-described as a deadhead, often found its way into his broadcasts, adding a distinctive flavor to his commentary. Off the court, Walton was known for his dedication to various causes and his love for his hometown of San Diego. His legacy extends beyond basketball, as he inspired many with his perseverance and passion for life. Bill Walton's influence on the sport and his contributions to broadcasting will be remembered and celebrated by fans and fellow athletes for generations to come. Tanya Sumner, who passed away at the age of 53 on May 24th, from a rare form of colon cancer, was a beloved former news anchor and dedicated local politician in Indiana. Known on air as Tanya Spencer, she left a memorable mark on the Indianapolis community through her compassionate reporting and unwavering commitment to public service. Sumner's career in broadcast journalism spanned two decades, with a significant portion of that time spent at WRTV, where she became a familiar and trusted face in many households. Her ability to connect with viewers and report with integrity earned her widespread respect and admiration. In 2022, Sumner was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer, a battle she faced with remarkable courage and grace. 
Her final Facebook post poignantly reflected her perspective on life's true treasures. Time, good health, those are our only true commodities, our only true currencies that matter. Despite her diagnosis, she continued to inspire those around her with her resilience and advocacy for health awareness. Sumner's journey took her beyond the newsroom as she transitioned to a career in local politics, serving District 3 on the Whitestown Town Council. Her dedication to her community was evident in every decision she made and every project she championed. Whitestown Town Manager Katie Barr expressed the collective grief of the community. The town of Whitestown has lost a dedicated leader who will leave a void in all our hearts. Vice President Sumner wasn't just a dedicated councilwoman. She was ingrained in our community and cared deeply for her family, friends, neighbors, and colleagues. Tanya Sumner is survived by her loving husband and teenage child. Her legacy of service, advocacy, and kindness will be remembered and cherished by all who had the privilege of knowing her. Her life's work and final message serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of health and the preciousness of time. Morgan Spurlock, who passed away at the age of 53 due to complications from cancer, was a groundbreaking documentary filmmaker, writer, and television producer. Known for his thought-provoking and often controversial works, Spurlock left an indelible mark on the world of documentary filmmaking. Born on November 7, 1970, in Parkersburg, West Virginia, Spurlock grew up in Beckley, West Virginia. He developed an early passion for storytelling and pursued a BFA in film at New York University's Tisch School of the Arts, graduating in 1993. His career took off with the release of Super Size Me in 2004, a documentary that explored the health effects of fast food consumption. The film was both a critical and commercial success, earning an Academy Award nomination for Best Documentary Feature and establishing Spurlock as a significant voice in the documentary genre. Spurlock's career was marked by a series of influential films including Where in the World is Osama Bin Laden, Palm Wonderful Presents, The Greatest Movie Ever Sold, and One Direction, This Is Us. His ability to tackle diverse subjects with a blend of humor, insight, and accessibility made his work resonate with a wide audience. As the executive producer and star of the reality television series 30 Days and the host of CNN's Morgan Spurlock Inside Man, he further demonstrated his versatility and commitment to exploring social issues. In addition to his filmmaking, Spurlock co-founded the short film content marketing company Cinelin and produced numerous projects under his production studio, Warrior Poets. Despite facing personal and professional challenges, including a public admission of past misconduct that led to his resignation from Warrior Poets, Spurlock continued to contribute to the industry with resilience and a dedication to truth-telling. Spurlock's impact extended beyond entertainment. He became an advocate for health awareness and critical thinking. His works often sparked important conversations about consumerism, health, and social responsibility. Morgan Spurlock is survived by his two children, leaving behind a legacy of impactful storytelling that challenged viewers to think critically about the world around them. His contributions to documentary filmmaking will be remembered for their courage, creativity, and the enduring conversations they inspired. Breaking news of the day. News 1. Shannon Doherty, known for her roles in Charmed and Beverly Hills 90210, is accusing her ex-husband, Kurt Iswarienko, of stalling their divorce proceedings amidst her battle with stage 4 cancer. The 53-year-old actress is seeking $15,343 in monthly spousal support, claiming Iswarienko is purposely delaying the process. In documents obtained by People, Doherty alleges that she has not received crucial financial information regarding Iswarienko's photography archive. She claims that he is waiting for her condition to worsen to avoid paying spousal support. It is simply not right that Kurt be permitted to prolong our divorce 
in hopes that I die before he is required to pay me while he continues to live his life, Doherty stated in court documents. Doherty, whose income is decreasing due to her illness, is requesting spousal support to cover her living expenses and medical needs. She argues that Iswarienko is living extravagantly, using their airplane and spending lavishly while she has no access to their funds or marital assets. Iswarienko's lawyer, Catherine Hirsema, disputes Doherty's claims, stating that he offered a settlement in October 2023, which Doherty denied. Kurt is not simply waiting for Shannon to die, Hirsema asserted. He wants the best for Shannon, and he wants both of them to be able to put this case behind them and move forward. Doherty's filing highlights her dire financial situation as her health insurance from Sagi is at risk and her residuals from Charmed are decreasing. She also accuses Iswarienko of avoiding his responsibilities while living a luxurious lifestyle. As the legal battle continues, Doherty hopes to secure the financial support she needs during this challenging time. News 2. Jessica Alba embodies a growth mindset in both her business and personal life. The actress is back to her action-packed roots with Trigger Warning, premiering today on Netflix. As an executive producer, Alba had significant input in shaping the film. I knew I wanted to create a badass action film where the woman wasn't the damsel in distress or cold and heartless, Alba tells Alexa. I wanted you to feel Parker's softness and vulnerability as much as her rage as she unravels the mystery around her father's death and seeks vengeance. Alba underwent two months of intense training and fight choreography for the role. The Honest Company founder, who recently stepped down as chief creative officer but remains on the board, expanded her lifestyle brand into the feel-good home makeover show Honest Renovations with co-host Lizzie Mathis. Season 2 returns to Roku later this summer. While Alba will be prominent on TV, her off-screen focus is family. The mom of three aims to hang with my kiddos and make memories this summer. Emulating her parents and grandparents as the ultimate hosts, she plans to throw barbecues, swim parties, and backyard movie nights. Alba stays fashionable and feeling her best with her mindful toolkit, which includes crystals, charms, and motivational books. I love that you can dress this watch up or down. It's just a chic statement piece. I also love to stack it with jewelry, she says.